Jeffrey wishes he was a millionaire. He sees the lifestyle of people like Andrew Tate and can't help but feel envious. He dreams of starting a successful business, becoming financially free, and finally attracting women with his wealth. But Jeffrey continues to squander his time. He wastes hours of the day gaming instead of building on his real self. Jeffrey knows he's wasting time, but he does it anyway. Adonis. Adonis knows that gaining wealth demands patience and hard work. He spent his teenage years reading the books of successful men like The Psychology of Selling and How to Win Friends and Influence People, absorbing all the knowledge he read and so when he started his first business, he knew exactly what to do. While all of his friends were spending their teenage years drinking, partying and playing video games, Adonis was mastering the art of entrepreneurship so that he could enjoy his later years. I've previously mentioned how a bunch of books have changed my life. And so in this video, we're going to go over some of the best books I've read again. But I'm also going to speak about a bunch of books that I've never spoke about before. This topic of the kind of books that help you to make more money and become successful is very close to my heart because I remember when I was 21 years old and I graduated from university with a psychology degree and no one had really spoke to me before, you know, telling me that degrees were kind of pointless. But after getting the degree, I started applying to jobs and wasn't really eligible for any better jobs than I was at age 18 before the degree. And eventually, I started working a full-time customer service job, making £8.41 per hour. Hated my life. Nine-hour work days. Waking up like 5 a.m. to get to the office early because they had a gym that, you know what I mean? Like I was literally in the office like all day, finish, get home at like 7 p.m. I've got two hours. I hated my life. And then I discovered two books that changed it all for me. And I've mentioned these two books a lot. So we won't really cover them that much. But the two books were The 4-Hour Work Week and The Millionaire Fast Lane. By the way, I have a YouTube video like guides and summaries of both of these books that I'll have appear as like a card on screen and also a link in the description. Reading these two books reframed how I saw money, time, productivity, and suddenly I couldn't stay in the job that I was working at anymore because I knew that it wasn't going to make me successful at all. I knew that hoping to get a promotion one year from now was going to be fucking bullshit, that I had to create a business to reach the kind of success that I wanted to build. Just reading those two books and trying to implement them as best as I could quite literally changed the future trajectory of my life. So much so that I even emailed the author of The Millionaire Fast Lane and literally thanked him for the work that he did because I wouldn't be here today as a YouTuber with employees, with a successful business and a company. Like, I wouldn't be here today if I didn't read these books. And I think that's the core value that you can get is if you read the right books, you might literally change the future of your life. The first book I'll very briefly go over is How to Win Friends and Influence People. I have a full one hour guide to this book. So I'll have a card pop up on screen right now. Most young men have poor communication skills. That's interesting, isn't it? We have poor social skills because of social media. It's very interesting, but most young guys' communication skills are just not that nice. They can't really speak they can't really voice their opinions. They can't win any kind of debates or anything. And that means that they just can't get their voice across and they can't communicate to other people. And honestly, a lot of success is just communicating to other people. If not all of it, honestly, think about it. Most of success is just communicating something valuable to other people. If you're selling something on you know, a website, well, you're communicating the value of that to the potential customer. Me right here, right now, I'm communicating what I'm gonna talk about in this video to you. Most young men have really poor communication skills. They're just not used to like speaking out loud. They're very silence, like your, your ability to talk and actually be good at talking, be good around other people has just been throttled by the education system where you've been told to like, you know, sit quietly. Becoming extremely successful, becoming a millionaire and especially wanting to become an entrepreneur requires great communication skills. So this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, I think is like an absolute must. Yeah, I may as well tell you, like I wasn't planning to ever really mention this, but I read this book every morning, by the way, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I literally read it every single morning. Like I'm not even taking the piss, bro. Every single morning I have the hardcover book on top of my laptop so before I even open my laptop screen and whilst I've you know I've, I've literally just woken up so my eyes are still crusty and stuff I'll open up the book and literally just read two three chapters or if I'm having a shit in the morning I'll literally just open up the Kindle app and reread this book I've read it maybe 10 times 20 times now doesn't matter maybe once you've read this book every single day and you've tried to implement it for about 10 20 years straight wow honestly wow the thought of that blows my mind imagine every single day for the next 10 years you read a couple of pages of this book you've read it you know what I mean you've read it like fucking 50 times at this point but imagine you just keep recapping yeah you've read this exact same paragraph, but just keep recapping it. And then the specific thing I do is I go about my day trying to use that exact thing that I've just learned from this book, which is the absolute best way to read. Some people like to read for two hours straight and you know, it's just kind of fun to do that. It's kind of like instant gratification. It's not really helping you. For the rest of these books, the way to actually get them to help you is to read a little bit and actively go about your day trying to use that thing that you've just learned. And I think this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People is the single greatest book that you can do with this. I read a couple pages of it every single morning just before I do my follow-up 
call. So every morning I go onto Discord and I go onto my big server and I go onto like one of the one-to-one -one video calls there at about 6 a.m. UK time. I go onto one of them and I literally have it in my mind what I've just learned from this book. It's like literally putting my social skills on steroids. The second book is The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. Now this is the first sales book I ever read and it was the first book by Brian Tracy who's now my all-time favorite author. You can't really become a millionaire without learning how to sell in some way and this book was such a great introduction to selling for me. If you're honest right now you probably have no idea how to sell a product let alone yourself. The thing is you're always selling. Now when we think of sales we think of you know selling something on the phone but the thing is we're using the skill of sales throughout the entire day. You are selling yourself. When you meet someone for the first time you're selling you as a product. When you message a girl and tell her yeah come meet me on this date you're selling like that experience and so most guys are terrible at sales and so of course they don't sell any of these dates. They don't sell themselves at all. If you've looked into the sales community you know men who are salesmen it's kind of like a cliche thing bro. Salesmen guys who are who are into this the field of sales they fuck. It's just like a truth of this field when you hire a salesman he's the kind of guy who fucks. It just always is. When there's a team of salesmen they literally all are having sex right now. They're all good like this is weird as fuck to say but like they're all good at getting women and making money because getting women and making money have relatively the same processes. Have a good product to sell and know how to sell it know how to market it know about your customer and what objections they may have and destroy all those objections so that you get the clothes. <laughs> Getting girls is literally just sales. Now everyone's like, wait, whoa, 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 holy shit, I'm gonna learn sales. Now I can't wait to learn sales. Now I'm gonna get some pussy. <laughs> The third book is titled Who Moved My Cheese by Spencer Johnson. And it's a book on making better decisions and also what to do to stay on top of like changes in your work environment. You see, once you get to a certain point, your work day is literally just making decisions. Now that might seem like a vague sentence, what I've just said, but you'll begin to relate to this as you get more successful. When you first start off in the work world, whether you work in a career or you're trying to make a business, most of your work day is just filled with like tasks that you need to do. So you need to do what your boss says, or you need to, you know, do this task, record this video whatever you need to like do everything right you you record the video you edit it you write the script and everything then you upload it you do everything but as you get higher and higher and these like smaller tasks start being like given to someone else you know you outsource scripting for example i'm reading a script right now that someone else has wrote for me i've outsourced that part after this video is done and i press the stop button this video is sent to my editor and he's doing that part after a while you start to have less tasks to actually do and you're suddenly your days just spent literally just making decisions because one good decision for example in me in this point now one good decision for me is worth more than a hundred grand. Think about that. One good decision for me is worth more than a hundred thousand dollars right now and more than a hundred thousand dollars. That's fucking huge. You might not be at this point just yet when your decisions are, you know, very impactful and you're thinking right now, okay, what decisions do I have? I just decide what to eat. You'll really see the seriousness of this as you level up. And so if you expect to become successful, because this is really interesting, what's happening to your brain as we just covered this book, Who Moved My Cheese? I said it's about making decisions and it's, you know, something that will come to you as you get more successful. Have you just suddenly gotten a feeling of like, oh yeah, this book's kind of pointless. I, you know, I'll move on to the next one. Because if you plan to become extremely successful, if you know that you will, you would have taken this book, this section of this video seriously. You would have thought, okay, Hamza said this book and, you know, making decisions is going to be important when I become successful. So I'm going to listen. I'm going to pay attention. But it'd be very interesting if you just kind of thought, I like, nope, don't, don't need to hear it. That would just be something interesting for you to just think about for a second. The fourth book and a really popular one is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This is like a foundation to financial education. It's teaching people pretty basics of like good financial education that they've never been given before. So the thing is, I've said previously on other videos that chances are you've been conditioned by your parents, by your teachers, by the script of world around you to listen to like poor people's advice. Like everyone who spoke to you before about making money, about saving money and everything has spoke to you from the lens of a poor person. I don't say that to be horrible, but chances are your parents are broke. Chances are the teachers you've had through your entire life are broke. If you're in university right now, your professors are broke. Everyone who you've ever taken financial advice from is broke. They have less than 10,000 pounds in their bank account. That might seem like a big amount of money right now for you, but really think about it. They've been working for 20 years, 30 years. If they have less than 10,000 pounds in their bank account, they are broke. What they've done is clearly not working to become a millionaire or to become wealthy. It sounds horrible to say that about our family and you know our parents, our teachers, but it is the objective truth. A book like Rich Dad, Poor Dad gives you this level of education that you need. For example, it'll teach you something like a house is not actually an asset. The majority of people that you know think of their house as an asset. This was like a groundbreaking realization that Robert 
Kiyosaki had. Houses are actually liabilities. It's only an asset if it makes you money. It teaches you how to invest and why not to just keep your money in a bank account because inflation will just decrease how much your money is worth, which is hugely what's happening right now. The fifth book is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Most young men operate way too much from this like spontaneous feminine emotion. And this is so relevant to what we're talking about because a lot of becoming successful is just being good at thinking. Honestly, I will say that again. Please take it seriously. A lot of becoming successful is just being good at thinking. Once you're good at thinking, you'll then go and do the right actions. You know, you'll, you'll take action, you'll do the work, or eventually you'll be good at thinking and then you'll make someone else do the work and you'll pay them to do the work. Either way, it all starts with thinking. Like your ability to think right is absolutely essential because if you're thinking in the wrong way, you're not going to become successful. So in this book, it explains that there's like two ways to think. This book is very similar to another one I read called The Chimp Paradox by Stephen something. Both of these books teach you that there's like two parts of your brain that you can use to think. One of them is like your chimp fast reptilian brain. It's the part of your brain that just reacts to stuff. So for example, you see like a mean text message, you know, some text message that's kind of like negative and instantly you get like angry or upset. Instantly you feel that. But the second part of your brain that we can use for our thinking, which in this book, they said it was like the second system. And in the chimp paradox books, they said it was like the human mind. That's the part of your brain that responds, not reacts, but responds to situations. That's the part of your brain that takes a second to understand. It sees your chimp going crazy about emotions. And oh my God, so crazy. But you stop and you say, okay, what does this actually mean? How will this actually affect me? What is the best way for me to go about this situation? That seems very simple. What I've just said doesn't seem very significant, does it? This would literally change almost every moment of your life. You don't realize how overpowered this is because our thoughts and emotions largely do dictate our lives. Now, if you're like a masculine guy and you don't listen to your emotions, that's fantastic. That's how we should be. But chances are you're not. You're not Andrew Tate. You're not the superior man. Chances are your emotions and your weak thinking lead you to negative consequences. Not only is a book like this and a system to follow, which helps you to think, gonna make you a millionaire. It's also gonna help you in every other part of your life. It's gonna help you become more happy. It's gonna help you in relationships. Imagine you like you start dating a girl and you know she says something that gets you really emotional. Well, then you're just gonna be like 99% of guys who get emotional when they are emotional. But there's 1% of men, the superior men, who get those same emotions, but they don't become emotional. They feel the same emotions as the other guy, and yet they think rationally and they respond, not react, they respond to the situation. Next time something happens in your life, just remember that you've got two systems that you think. One of them is like the really fast one that's usually emotional and it's usually the bad one to follow. And one of them is the slow one, the slow one that takes time to really analyze and think critically and logically. Rich, successful people, happy people, largely use the slow system way more than the fast one. If you're stuck in the chimp mode, like the fast thinking mode, you're gonna be so unhappy because you're just gonna keep getting angry at shit and emotional. Book number six is Good to Great by Jim Collins. And this has become one of my all time favorite books for more of a, like a high level entrepreneurship. So once you've built a business and you really wanna now study successful companies that have performed amazingly well, this book was like a huge piece of research where Jim Collins and his like research team of 20 people went and studied like for years and years and years, all like, you know, this autistic detail of like 15 different companies to see exactly what they did to become successful. And they laid out a few principles from the top of my head, starts with a level five leader. And a level five leader is a person who has lots of humility, but also lots of will and discipline. Then the next step for that leader, so that leader could be you if you develop yourself into it. The next step is to start employing the right people, the top level talent. You need like some high level people on your side. After that, in your journey from going from good to great, it's about seeing where you really are, confronting the brutal facts of reality, but not letting that negatively affect you. This book, Good to Great by Jim Collins, is so good that I bought it for my friend Sam, who's one of my employees. I bought it for him and I told him I wanted him to read it as well because I got tons of ideas and now he started reading it. He's telling me that he really likes the book as well. And it honestly is changing like our entire company and I can't recommend it enough. Number seven, and really just quickly because I've mentioned this book a lot and I just wanted to mention it in this video as well. The Way of the Superior Man. Now this book is written by a very intelligent person called David Dieter. He's become like an expert in masculine and feminine energy. The reason why it's relevant is because it teaches you exactly how a masculine man operates. Now the thing is you're probably not that masculine just yet, but the majority of young men do want to get more masculine. You want to be more of a man. You want to be more successful. You want to be more masculine. And honestly, you want the women around you to be more feminine. The beautiful thing about becoming more masculine is that you automatically start to filter through women. And when a woman is next to you, she starts to just automatically become more feminine just because you're more masculine. It's one of the most beautiful, best experiences I've had in my entire life is developing my masculinity and now meeting a girl who suddenly becomes so feminine next to me that now it's like I'm here focused on my work, which is a purely masculine thing to do. She sat in the living room right now thinking, 
thinking about me, which is a purely feminine thing to do. That might seem crazy, and there might be someone watching this thinking, well, why would you want that? Why is she just thinking about it? Like, once you read this book, you really start to understand masculine and feminine energy. And you realize that masculine energy is all about work, the mission, and the freedom from constraints that come from like something that we need to like, you know, check off, that we need to like do and accomplish. It's a fantastic book that I've recapped so many times. It's truly changed my life. I've mentioned it literally like 50 times on my channel. The Way of the Superior Man by David Dieter. The eighth book that we're going to talk about. Now, I've not read this one, but I am going to recommend it to you. And it is Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. So Gary, you probably know him. He's like this big, like social media kind of guy. And so this book, he's pretty much just describing how to make an online business. Now, I didn't read this book because I first discovered it when I was already, you know, very like advanced, not advanced, but like, you know, I was already years into this journey. And so at one time I very briefly looked through it, but I didn't really learn anything new from it. But this was because I was already two years into this journey of making a social media business, cultivating an audience. As I was flicking through the pages, I thought to myself like, this actually would have been valuable if I read it two years ago. So if you have the desire to create a business like I've done here with this YouTube channel, selling products, having like an audience of people who like you, this is a good book to do that with. Inside of this book, Crush It by Gary Vee, you'll learn that in order to turn your passion into a profit, you have to turn yourself into a brand. And so Gary Vee's really good at this. He teaches you how to like brand yourself. Like I'm essentially a product. Does that make sense? Like obviously I'm a person, but like now I've become a product. I've become a brand. I remember he walks you through the process of picking the platform, you know, the social media website on which you should start posting to and that, you know, you can post your story. He helps you with the step of like actually figuring out, should you be a YouTuber? Should you instead focus on Twitter or Rumble or TikTok? And he had a good message that I really agreed with that he really told you to prioritize being authentic. Authenticity is kind of like being the true you, not trying to lie or cover up or really act like anyone else. One of the most common compliments I get anytime I, I ask for, you know, feedback for these videos and I say like, what do you like about the videos? What do you like about me? Pretty much always it's just authentic or relatable. It's just like, there's no act going on here. I'm not trying to be anyone I'm not. Sometimes I speak in more of like, you know, serious tone because I am more serious, but like other times I'm a bit more goofy. It's like, I never sit down and think to myself like, yeah, let me pretend to be someone else. Let me like act in a certain way. You can just see that it's just like a normal, natural personality. And that becomes, even though right now, like you know, I'm speaking in a mundane way, you're still captivated by what I'm saying because it's just interesting to see someone who's just real instead of these like fakers that you see on social media. For the ninth book, it's gonna be different than what you expect. Me and my friend Sam, so you know, he was my first employee. We've been speaking more and more about religion and raising families and you know, getting more into like the mature light. And it really clicked for me a few days ago that the way to move forward in life is to prioritize family and having children, which is common sense. Cause you know, that's always been my biggest goal is to become a father and to raise my children as best as possible. And so me and Sam sat there and I asked him some questions cause I really wanted him to help me think. And I asked him, would being married to the mother of your children be the best thing? Well, yeah, of course it would. Now in the modern day, especially in like Western degenerate cultures, it's normal to like have children outside of marriage. And you know, you hear a lot of these red pill guys saying never get married. They're saying never get married to the, the women that they attract, which of course I agree with. They should not get married to those women. But the idea is like, there are women out there who are worth marrying. So you should get married, you should have children. Then I thought, okay, religion. Through the discussion that my best friend and I had about religion, it became so apparent that it's something that I have to consider for the sake of my future family. And so the ninth book that I think every aspiring millionaire should read is some kind of holy book. And I'm gonna choose the Quran. Alhamdulillah brothers, I'm back. I'm back into the, I'm gonna take the gold off now, don't I? You, you really can't wear gold as a Muslim. What, what if it's not real gold? <laughs> I've just exposed myself. What if it's not real gold, bro? <laughs> I'm not that, I'm not that rich yet. <laughs> Click and watch this video right now, do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.